the guy you've just been giving dawa to comes to you and says to you, hey, you want to go out with my friends? You ask, which friends? Oh, my old party friends. We're just going to go to the local club. What happens next? <laughs> So this is actually something which um, I think not just new Muslims uh, will need and can relate to, but many obviously existing practicing Muslims can, or reborn Muslims, those who just start practicing seriously, they can also relate to this as well. Um, you're now in a new stage of your life. It doesn't really matter whether you have just left kufr behind and you're now a Muslim or whether you've left all of that sin behind and now you're a practicing Muslim. The past is um, sometimes painful when you look upon it, but it's also very, very powerful. A lot of great relationships were made and it's, it's incorrect for us. And this is very interesting. It's incorrect as a da'i, um, as someone who's calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with knowledge to ignore the fact that... Um, even our companions used to kind of wistfully look back on the days. You know, back in the days, this used to happen, that used to happen. And they used to laugh about it. It used to be reminiscing of the days of Jahiliyyah. Now, the difference here, of course, is that they're laughing and smiling, not over the fact that they really wish that that would come back again, but at their kind of stupidity or, or at their, how lost they were. And Alhamdulillah, you know, I can't believe I used to do this. I used to listen to that. I used to go to this place and, and they are, Alhamdulillah, I'm guided. I used to have a little laugh. And do you remember when we did this, when we did that? So I want you to know that it's not some kind of level of self-righteousness if you kind of uh, deny this kind of reality or you tell other people, well, Akhi, that's haram for you to be kind of bringing that up and so on and so forth. Uh, one of the kind of interesting uh, 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 applications of this is when a, non, uh, uh, a new Muslim re reminisces when he was a non-Muslim or when she was a non-Muslim and says, I used to eat bacon, it used to really taste nice. And the Muslims are like, Astaghfirullah, you can't say that. And uh, I'm like, why can't he say that? It was uh, permissible for him to eat it at that time and he enjoyed the taste. And that's the end of the story. That's all he said. He didn't say, I'm now going to go eat bacon now because it's so nice. He didn't say that. He didn't say that back in the day, I never used to drink. I used to only drink Bailey's whiskey and it used to be really, really nice, the creamy kind of stuff. And that's the only kind of thing that I think we could relate to anyway, because the rest of the stuff, you know, looks like, you know, what you do in the toilet. So we'll leave that part there. So the issue is, is that is reminiscing itself a problem? No. So. Um, I want you to know that obviously a person who's a friend, and they're a person, don't forget, a person is a combination of ideas, experiences, relationships, and so on. They're coming to you with a lot of history. Not all of it is baggage, because the word baggage is what we kind of use to describe the negative aspects of history. There are people there that have had relationships with people who are really loyal friends. They're non-Muslims and so on and so forth. There are family members out there that they had good relationships with. And there are family members out there that they had bad relationships with. So what we want to try and just get to try to understand in this little episode is what are the parameters that we uh, need to understand? What are the guidelines that we need to uh, stick to when it comes to um, our interaction with old friends? Our old company, colleagues, work colleagues, uh, the girls that we used to know back in the day, or if or if it's a new Muslimah, then the, the guys that she used to hang with, um, and family members and so on. First of all, I just want to make something very, very clear. Um, as we all know anyway, but again, the Prophet ﷺ emphasized that a person is upon the religion of their companion. This hadith is an authentic hadith, and it basically saying that peer pressure is every single pressure. The, 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 the reality is that you will follow your best friend. You will follow your crew. It doesn't matter whether you like it, believe in it, don't, you know, uh, are against it. But if enough voices, enough people, or enough people of significance to you, or anyone that you love goes that way, then you will go that way too. And so it's very important to understand the power of your friends, of your friends. Don't think for one any second that actually these are people that ah, I can be relaxed with. I don't need to worry too much about them. They can't have a very significant effect upon me. And so it's very important to understand the power of your companion, your friend, your colleague, your old girlfriend, your old boyfriend, your old lover. It doesn't matter who that person is. Once they have achieved a, a status with you and reached a position in your heart, then they'll always be able to have an influence upon you. Now, I'm not 
telling you to become super paranoid and stay away from every single person and every single person's a devil and they're going to lead you to hell and so on and so forth but you need to not be under any kind of illusion about the power of your company that's why the Prophet Sallallahu made it connected with the deen he said the person is upon al mar yani a man a person is upon the deen of their companion they are going to take them so seriously that they will actually take their deen in fact i can tell you horror stories horror stories when in our position of ifta giving rulings to people who come to us and so on i remember a number of cases not just a one off of sisters who um have fallen for a work colleague a non-Muslim male, often the often is the case, and the 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 fact that they're falling in love with them is so powerful and so strong. And obviously, the parents are not having any of it. They're like, "You you want to behave?" and you know, they're kicking them out or whatever. And they're like so freaked out by that. They said, "Well, you know what? I've not only disowned you, I disowned my religion as well. I disowned my religion." And I remember speaking to one sister who said, "I don't want to become, I don't want to remain Muslim if it's going to keep me away from." my boyfriend, so and so. So I want you to understand that really when a person reaches that position with you, they are super powerful. They can make you change every single thing that you have, every opinion, every idea, even your deen. And so how do we interact with this reality? You know that with that power, you go and spend time with them. They're going to then stop you spending time with the believers. They are going to keep you away from the masjid. They're going to keep you away from beneficial knowledge from you, learning from you, keeping a good and wholesome environment. Of course, this is being very general. This is almost a stereotype. It's not the case that every single person out there is like that. But to be honest, the majority of your previous uh, con your, your colleagues and your family and your friends, they live a different type of life. They are different to you in the way that they have their certain uh, customs, their values. They like, they like to go out. They like to drink. They like to, to socialize. They like to do things which are not permissible for you anymore. So it's quite natural for us to feel... Uh, weary of our friends and to be cautious of this this company and so therefore i want to say to you that it is islamically ordained it is an actual requirement to um and i could actually sell this as in, not even within an islamic paradigm i can say that even from this the secrets of success of successful people and all these kind of life coaches and all these big kind of people that are uh, that train successful people and very uh, wealthy people and powerful people, they tell them the same thing. Get rid of the noise. Get rid of those that are um, people who are distracting you. Those people who are not pushing you to become bigger and better and so on. So this is something which non-Muslims fully understand. So as a Muslim, you should of course apply it min bab al and it's more deserving for you to be more cautious about your religion and your identity and about your deen and making sure that you are not you know, taken away. So you know, for example, if you go out with your friends into a certain scenario where they're organizing the event, they're in control, then you are not going to have a save where you go, where, where they're drinking, who they're meeting, and so on and so forth. So you would step back from that. You would make your apologies. And making the apologies can be of two types. You either see yourself as very confident, very strong, and you come out and say, listen, guys, I tell you straight up, this is me, this is who I am, and I'm not that kind of guy anymore, and you know, I'm not down for these kind of things, and I'm not really into that. And that's a confident guy and a confident person who can pull it off. There's another type, of course, that doesn't feel that level of confidence. And so therefore, they start making excuses. Oh, I've got something to do that night. Oh, I've got to go out that night. Oh, my mom, I've got to help my mom that night. I've got... And that's something which is allowed for that person to say in order to stave off the greater harm because they don't feel the confidence to say it there and then. I don't advise that, but we, we, I understand it. And I know that people don't feel ready to be able to come out. Their friends are going to say, oh, you're an extremist. Oh, we always knew this is the reason we didn't, we didn't want you to become Muslim. That's why, we didn't, we're not, that's why we're not following you, because this is what your religion tells us, and so on and so forth. And so this, this, this added uh, factor of the need to give da'wah to these people and to make sure they have a positive uh, vibe from the deen of Islam, this new religion that you're hanging, the one that you're rocking, the one that they're seeing on you, that's also very important. So how can we kind of summarize these issues and, and how can we move forward? What we will say is that if you're in control of where your family are or where your friends are, where your colleagues are, for example, they tell you to come to a Christmas party and you say, you know what, sack that, I can't make that or I don't want to come to that or I don't feel comfortable there, but I tell you what, next day or day before or week before or week after 
Why don't you come over to mine? Or why don't you take them to a restaurant, for example, where you're in control? The food's halal. There is no alcohol. There is no free mixing and disco and club and all that kind of nonsense. It's at a normal time, not a time that's going to make you miss Fajr, for example, and staying out until two o'clock at night. You're in control. And so therefore, here, with everything under your uh, remit, you can invite them and keep it cool. And now listen, it doesn't need to be all awkward where you're just giving dawah every five seconds. This is another misconception that the only time that you can spend with your old friends and colleagues is a got to be talking about Allah, got to be talking about Deen, got to be talking about Islam. This is also overkill. Sometimes you just need to be able to go back to these folks, these friends of yours, these these people who you, who used to have a lot of love for you and a lot of time for you, and just show them that you got a, you still got a lot of love and a lot of time for what they used to be. It doesn't. Not every single interaction needs to be a dawah episode. Not every single moment that you speak to them has got to be about trying to save them from the fire. Got to tell them this. Got to tell them that. It's just good to stay in the loop. That you know that there's someone there. You tell them, hey, listen, how you been? What's going on? How's things with you? And so on and so on. Or how's work? And how's uh, did you get that job? Whatever. You know that I'm here for you. If you need a reference, need money, need any help. This is probably the greater uh, focus that should be uh, 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 played at this moment in time. Because your old friends are going to be judging you very, very, very closely. You see, they don't have a very positive idea of Islam as it is. And you, they know. And when they see you change, then they'll say for certain this religion is, is a problem. Or this is an uh, evil religion. All this kind of nonsense which they read in the papers. They'll be very, very clear on that. So you've got a, a great role to be very tactful. And not thrust it in their face. Not cut them off completely. So they say, you see these extremists, that's exactly what the problem is. They're born here. They... They, they, uh, they, they, you know, they grow up with us and everything's absolutely fine. Suddenly they become serious in a religion and they start cutting everyone off. It's all about boycotting. It's all about now, don't want to be with you. Non-integration. Not, I don't want to be uh, your friend. I don't want to have any contact with you, etc., etc. And that's something which you obviously have to be very careful of. So um, this, the answer to this question is not about giving specifics that you can do this, you can do that. It's a very general principle to understand. That anything that they do which is permissible, you are allowed to partake in. It is best that whatever happens in any kind of event or any kind of interaction, you are in control so that the parameters are within Islamic guidelines. And always understand that you don't have to make every single moment into a dawah moment. Just keep that connection, keep that love going, because there will come a time when you will see this person and they will be lost. They will need help, they will need guidance, and they will know that at least he stayed in touch with me, at least she kept in touch with me, and I can turn to them and they can help me. I know them from before, and they're a better person as it is now. Maybe they're the one that I need to turn to, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.